Hello, beautiful people. If you're new here, my name is Amanda Zitto and this is my brother, Gary. <laughs> we are currently on our way to Revzilla's Get On Edgy Fest in South Dakota. This is gonna be our third year. Third year. We're the OGs. OGs. We're very excited. It's one of our favorite events every single year. And yesterday we left the ranch and we rode here to uh, the Pioneer Mountain Scenic Byway and camped out last night just outside of Wise River, Montana. And we are 25 miles away from one of my favorite ghost towns. So we're definitely gonna hit that. But last night we got to test some new gear. I did a silly thing. Insert last night footage. <laughs> Isn't it nice not to use a rock? That's kind of nice. <laughs> In prep for this particular trip, I got a new piece of gear. The Jetboil Genesis 2. <laughs> it's huge. It is pretty ridiculous. <laughs> it's a big baby. <laughs> this might be like one of the most ridiculous things I've ever packed on a motorcycle. <laughs> Luckily, like my... So like my... The big pot fits in the top, and then the skillet over all of it. Like that's the 10 inch skillet, so it's not like terrible. It's not bad. Like, so the bag does have like more than one use, but then you just like, oh. <laughs> um, Besides my test use at home to make sure that fuel was getting to the burner, this is gonna be our first use of the Genesis, so. Okay, the little rubber things come off like this, and then it badoops. <laughs> Am I the only one who's amused by this? Maybe. There's the fuel. Dinner is actually going to be dehydrated chili mac that I made myself at home. <laughs> I knew that the first day of this trip to ADB Fest was going to be long. Today alone, I've been awake since 4 a.m. It is now. It's been a long day <laughs> and I am tired and hungry. Anyway, that was a long story to tell you that we're eating dehydrated chili mac that I made ahead of time because I knew that I was going to be tired. <laughs> um, and we're gonna test our new stove. Very exciting. Looking pretty darn good. Kind of exciting. Okay, if you're wondering why we got this two burner stove when I'm very, very happy with my relationship with my Primus Spider, I promised a few people at ADV Fest that I would cook food for them. And as we experienced in Utah, cooking two servings worth of food on my backpacking stove is a little bit of a stretch. Like, it's doable, absolutely. It takes longer than what I'm accustomed to. It takes longer than I'm accustomed to because normally I'm cooking just for a, my single serving self. So I was sitting over here cooking two servings for both of us uh, during the Utah trip being like, this is taking forever. And then thinking about the promise that I made to cook other people food at AV Fest. And I was like, I am not cooking like four servings worth of food on my backpacking stove. That is not happening. So I reached out to Moto Camp Nerd and asked him if he could special import the Genesis for me and I could be the guinea pig for the experience of trying to lug this thing on a motorcycle. I will say, it takes up a lot of space. <laughs> if I wasn't planning to cook for like more than just Gary and I, I don't know if I would justify the space that this takes up. Even with like the faster cook time, because it's propane, it's a larger burner, for the size, it takes up a lot of space. A lot of space that I could have been using to haul regular food and not just a stove. I knew it was going to be about more food. <laughs> <laughs> we pack our fears and my fear is being hungry. <laughs> I can see this stove being like really, really fantastic for people who haul trailers though. Mm, yeah. 
Or maybe like a group of a whole a group of people that are like, Yeah. If you're gonna go on a group trip and you kind of divide the like who's carrying what amongst you guys, like without lugging like one of those huge freaking Yeah, without like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because it definitely is like that's a good point, is that it's a smaller footprint than the like traditional Coleman two burner stoves that we're used to that like look like a suitcase. Yeah. Um, because that definitely is a larger footprint. I you could fit it on you, a motorcycle, but it would be... You'd have to like strap it to the back. We'll see. We'll, we'll continue testing it and we'll, I'll update you at the end of this trip after I cook people food at <laughs> ABV Fest. <laughs> anyway, our food's getting cold. Yes. Good choice. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, beautiful people from our campsite on the Pioneer Mountain Scenic Byway. Brother uh, is traditionally the person who makes us hot water in the morning, but his stove did not want to boil water this morning. Brother has this isobutane four season canister that just did not want to burn this morning because it's so chilly here. Um, so we busted out the Genesis <laughs> to boil some water and you know, I'll, I will give another point to the propane because it, it, it boiled in a very short period of time. So I, I'm gonna give, I'll give the Genesis some credit even though it takes up so much space. <laughs> but we have hot water, we're gonna make breakfast Eventually we'll pack up and get out of here. Brother, I found the secret to the perfect pants that you wear under your riding pants. It's linen pants. Life-changing. I will never not be riding in the summertime without linen pants now. They look like pajama pants if you wear them by themselves, but it's worth it. <laughs> Yesterday I wore the linen under my riding pants and it was like night and day different. Normally I wear like hiking pants underneath of my riding pants and this was so much better. Um, highly recommend. I could see that. Yeah. Probably a little bit more breathable. Yes, definitely breathe more breathable. It's not sticking to your skin when you get sweaty. All of those things. It's a good time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, bikes are packed up. Everything's ready to go. We're going to go to one of my favorite ghost towns that I've been trying to get to for forever. We tried our darnest to go there last year during the Montana tour, but unfortunately due to the weather, it was not accessible. So we're going now. We're too close for me to stand it. So let's hit the road. <laughs> Goodbye campsite. This ghost town, like many others in Montana, was created to mine silver. It was founded in 1908, and by 1922 the town had a post office, telephone service, 
and electricity, which is crazy to think about because how remote this site is. Despite the optimistic prospects of the silver mine, by the time the mine tunnel was operational, the national economy took a downturn and silver prices plummeted. In 1923, the whole operation went under. The people backing the town lost their personal fortune and control of the property. In 1927, a Montana power company dam failed, and water washed out 12 miles and several bridges of the railroad supporting the town. The school district and post office was abandoned in 1932. It can't quite be considered a boomtown, since they never really had the opportunity to profit off their hard work to set up the mine and the mill here. It's more of a story of missed opportunity. made it here and of course we had to recreate the classic picture of me and Lazarus in front of this beautiful building which is one of the best preserved out of the whole town. Unfortunately it doesn't have the same preservation program as Garnet does outside of Missoula so a lot of these buildings will continue to degrade until they join the earth again. I'd live here. <laughs> Even though the nearest town is like Wise River. That's the best part. <laughs> <laughs> They're like a miner, except you have no pickaxe. I'm mining for Instagram content. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good morning, beautiful people from the lovely Best Western in Billings. We pulled in and went promptly to bed because we were very tired. And now we have to get to Sturgis by 3 p.m. It is currently 7.30. Everything's fine. Everything's yeah. fine. <laughs> we'll, we'll make it, right? Right. And we will not have any flat tire this year. Knock on, knock on wood. <laughs> We'll arrive at check-in promptly on time, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Somebody was giving me crap out there, like, how do you see through that thing? I'm like, you don't. I don't. <laughs> I'm like, what? It is a wind shield, not sea grid yeah. shield. <laughs> but look to that. You look over top of it. Oh. Oh, brother, you were going to let me think that. Oh. <laughs> Well, it's good thing you put those on there.
ticket on ABB Fest. Yay! <laughs> Welcome to year three of Get On ABB Fest here in Sturgis, South Dakota. And I look forward to sharing the experience with you. Yeah, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Twenty twenty three was the third annual Get On ADV Fest in Sturgis, South Dakota, presented by Revzilla. Base camp at the Buffalo Chip includes industry vendors, a full cycle gear shop so you can purchase tires on site, OEM demo rides, training, showers, tent camping, RV parking, and cabins for rent. Revzilla very kindly gave us a cabin to stay in this year. Say hi. Hello. <laughs> nice to meet you. It's lovely to meet Dan. you. And the brother. brother. Yeah. Yes, I know. <laughs> you said Dan? Dan. Yeah. yeah, it's lovely to meet you. Would you like a sticker? Absolutely. Yay. <laughs> You're one of the very first ones I watched. Oh, thank you, you, you so much. Lazarus or whatever. Lazarus. <laughs> Lazarus. Lazarus. Yes, I'm very impressed. Do you remember her name? Uh, <laughs> I'm impressed you rode that thing when you rode it. <laughs> I didn't know any better. <laughs> <laughs> um, hydrate, make sure you pre-hydrate and rehydrate. Oh, we can answer your questions about the trails, we can answer your questions about bikes. First and foremost, in that rider packet, you need to put the trail pass on your motorcycle. It's a big green sticker, everybody got one, it's part of your admission. There are also a part of admission was breakfast and dinner, which Gary and I both agreed was even better than the previous year. <laughs> I love food and I love all of the amenities available at base camp at ADB Fest. However, the best part is getting to ride in the Black Hills. And first, I need a new tire. And while the lovely human beings at Fozzie's Garage were taking care of my rear tire, Gary and I were taking the CF Moto Ibexes out for a test ride. We stopped for a little break in the middle of our test ride with the Abexes for lunch. And uh, we were able to pick up our little sack lunches at breakfast this morning. So we have snacks. Yeah. <laughs> And before we go back to camp, the all important chai stop. Very important. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go give this baby back. The lovely people at CF Moto USA let us borrow some Ibex 800s today and let us just take them out. Nobody went with us. I think that. Uh, we were spoiled. We went and rode one of the easy dirt loops uh, since we were on street tires. 
<laughs> they did really well, actually, they for did. being street tires. They did handle very much better than I anticipated. My thoughts after riding the Ibexes today is that it's twitchy. Yes, the throttle response is a little... Like, yeah, it didn't seem to want to hold, especially like around third gear. Yeah. Like it didn't want to hold a cons consistent speed. It wanted to either be going yeah. or or off. Or off. <laughs> it was fun though, like when you like twist the throttle, it's like Yes. Yeah, it definitely had a lot of get up and go. A lot of torque, which makes sense. No traction control, so yeah. pretty easy to break re break the rear loose. Yeah. I tested that out a couple times. <laughs> One intentionally one not intentionally, but it straightened out, you know, it hooked up right away. Yeah. I think on the positive end of things, there it's a lot of features for a base model bike. Yes, that was one of the things that impressed me. I like that all of that stuff comes stock. Mm -hmm. So like the heated seat, heated grips, mm -hmm. you know. The, the, en the engine guards and the saddlebag racks come with it, the auxiliary lights. The you like the built-in 12 volt built-in two USB plugs. Of course, I'm a fan of USB plugs. That's all she wanted was the USB <laughs> plugs. It's like just tell her it has USB plugs. And uh, two rider modes. Yes, sport and rain. Yes, I know that they they told us that at the market they're marketing towards more of an adventure tour, not adventure off road. Yeah. Um, I think it's a good addition to what's available in the adventure market right now. Would I buy one? Probably not. It's a solid bike, though. Yeah. I mean, you know, for what it is, it's, you know, yeah. it handled really well. Because I think, like, right now, like, it being an 800, like, puts it into, like, that same, like, mid-range availability as, like, the Turig and the Desert X and the T7 and the Tiger. And the new V-Strom. And the new V-Strom <laughs> that Gary's really excited about. <laughs> <laughs> we actually seen one today <laughs> he was very happy with it yes yeah would you would you buy one brother would you buy an ibex i don't know what were they were like they were 10. priced about 10 yeah. yeah so i mean it's about the same as the v-strom and the t7 you know if if i had a choice between the three obviously i would go with the v-strom the V-Strom does have like the the different modes, so it's got the gravel, the rain, and, and yeah. that stuff. Um, I think, I don't remember if it has traction control. I think it does. Mm -hmm. I think it does, um, yes. But I think it's a little bit more expensive. I can't yeah. remember the price tag, but I probably wouldn't buy one. Um, not at this point. Mm -hmm. Like I think if they sorted out the the fueling issues, like the throttle response, or at least like gave you an option to control that yeah. yourself. Anyway, we had a good time. Yeah, overall, I mean, it's, it was a fun bike. Yeah, it was a fun bike. I'm not gonna complain no, about getting to ride it in the slightest. Right. Um, and uh, I think we're gonna go find dinner now. Dinner is good. Food is good. Food is good. I think there might also be slow races tonight. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> No intentionally touching another bike. You can cut off people's path of travel. Throwing it out. No, is everyone ready to see some slow racing?
a movement was born. It was something that just took Good morning, beautiful people from Revzilla Get On ADD Fest Day 3. I'm going to go off on a ride with Jen and Maggie and Wit and Stacy and all of the cool people. And I'm abandoning my brother for the day, but it's okay because he also has a riding buddy. Everything will be okay. But I'm excited. It's going to be a good day. Where are we going, Jen? We're going on to Galena. Yay! It's going to be a fun little ride. Yes. Some dirt roads, some double track. Yeah! It's going to be good. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. guy could do on the trail is run into a gorgeous group of women who will save them and feed them snacks. <laughs> With a toe strap. <laughs> I'm gonna inter I'm gonna interject here one second. Uh, Corey, Corey, I rode with last year. Corey came back again this year. Corey's on a BMW F850 GS. We had a Triumph Tiger 800 break a clutch lever. Corey donated his vice grips so we could make a clutch lever out of vice grips. I have your vice grips back, and I have a drink ticket for you. Thank you, Corey. So our prize today is a 500 US dollar. And just like that, it is the end of our time in the Black Hills. We had a wonderful time at ABB Fest. But in the meantime, guys, we're gonna end this video here. We still have at least one more adventure between us and Montana, and I hope that you enjoy that next week. In the meantime, guys, we'll see you later. Question for our end screen crew. Have you been in a cave? Have you been in a cave? Yep, yep, we'll see you guys later. <laughs>
Good morning, beautiful people from Pioneer Mountain Scenic Byway. We have a lovely little camp here, but as you can tell by Brother's Cocoon, it's a chilly morning. Yay! There's the sign. We're gonna go check in now. <laughs> Gary, buddy, I got bad news when you wake up. Your helmet is right in front of that sprinkler. It's okay. Apparently there was a free drying service as well. <laughs> <laughs> 